Take one man who rides alone. Add a voice in the night and a bargain sealed in the hot flash of gunfire. That's our story. The Marshal of Morgan County. Taken from the files of John Steele. Adventurer. Hello, friends. This is John Steele. Each week we get together at this time for an old-fashioned session of yarn spinning. Sometimes our stories are filled with action. Sometimes they're about places. But this one is the story of a man. I first met this fellow out in the big lonely prairies of Texas. And to this day, I'm still not 100% sure I know where he fits in. Maybe you'll be able to figure it out. What's his name? Elkins. What is it makes one man stick close to the town while the other lines out for the hills? I never have known rightly, but ever since I was a young'un, I found it easiest and best to move alone. Living by somebody else's law is all right for them as likes it, but I always had a mind to own myself. Being a loner, you learn pretty quick how to take care of yourself. You just don't get along. It's just as simple as that. You learn to let the other fellow do the talking while you do the watching. You learn to respect the split second between a word and an action. And you learn a lot by looking in a man's eyes. Of course, any man, even a frightened one, can be a killer. Well, that's how I'd moved for a big piece of my life and no complaints, neither. Then one night I rode into Abilene. It was spring, and the snow on the mountains was beginning to thaw, and the creeks was beginning to raise. The riders were stringing out toward the horse country, and the air was clear as spring water. Things was moving, and it was good to be alive. Before it wasn't Sam Hill, do you think of Marshall's fur? Well, I'm telling you, it is true. Good stuff, but he ain't that tough. Hey, you see. No, man, he is. <laughs> hey, mister. Huh? Give me a drink. Sure, sure. What'll it be? Whiskey. Yeah, yeah. There you be. Just leave the bottle. Sure. That's all. Sure. Uh, stranger, huh? Yeah. Yeah, name's Wendy. I own this here place. If you're looking for a place to stay, you're going to be in town long. Maybe. Just got the thing for your room upstairs, bar my back for your horse. Uh, now, Ralph. Shut uh, up, Wendy. Uh, I said we were talking. Were you? I don't like being interrupted. Uh, Ralph, Shut up. Uh, Look, uh, why don't you go down there and drink your drink, and I'll stay here. What's and... your name? I said... I know what you said. What's your name? Why is it every town's the same? I asked you a question. There's always a little squirt wants to show off. Mr. Seen dozens of your kind every time. I said now what's look, your squirt, name? Now look, squirt, go down there and finish your drink. I don't want to get mad. <laughs> and don't go reaching for your gun, neither, because I'm not reaching for mine. You won't be able to claim self-defense. <laughs> I told you, I wasn't going to draw. Now finish your drink and get out of here. <laughs> this time I won't be aiming at the floor. Hey, play something, Sam. Hey, you're a cool one, mister. Shot right in front of you and you didn't even blink. Yeah, little squirt. He's a mean cuss at Ralph Ford. They say he hangs out with Hamey. Ever hear Judd Hamey? Yep. Ha-ha, <laughs> he's bad. Been kicking up quite a fuss around here for the last year. I know. Gunned down a couple of marshals and... Hey, wait a minute. For a stranger, you know a lot about Abilene. Maybe. You're the new marshal. <laughs> they told us you was coming, but they didn't say when. Hey, what's your name? Um, Elkins. Uh, sure, that's the one, Tom Elkins. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I was... You wanted to get the lay of the land first, I know. Hey, hey, this here's the new marshal, fellas. Hey! You help yourself, Tom. I'll be back. I was watching. Huh? I liked what I saw. Who are you? Dean, I work here. I'm... Tom Elkins, I know. I'd watch Ralph Ford if I were you. Why? It's mean. Here is a friend of Judd Hamey's. What they say. What do you mean? Oh, but he's seen dead for two months. They say he's out in the hills. What's the sheriff been doing? Isn't one right now. Huh? 
Nobody wants a job. I see. It sounds wide open. Be careful, Tom. Wide open, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll be careful. Next morning, I headed over to what used to be the sheriff's office. The lock was gone off the door, and inside, the one cell in the back of the room was just like the town, wide open. I knew at best I only had three days to work in, and that didn't leave me no time to waste. I straightened up the place so those things looked right, and lined out for the Wells Fargo office. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for you? My name's Elkins. Oh, glad to meet you, Marshal. I'm John Steele. Howdy. Heard about you and young Ford last night. Whole town's talking. That's right. Yeah, it's about time somebody tightened up on that cold. Hmm. What can I do for you? Well, from what I hear, you folks been hit harder by this Hamey and his boys than anybody else. That's right. They've caught us twice in the last nine months. Well, I ain't to do something about that, but I'm going to need your help. You name it. Well, first off, I want to know when your next big shipment is. I don't suppose it's much of a secret. Every year about this time, we bring down quite a piece of cash from the Federal Bank up at the Capitol. When's that going to be? Two weeks. I want you to change it. Why? think it might be a good idea. To when? Tomorrow, the day after. I don't know. Plans are all made. They can be changed. I don't know. It's a big thing you're asking, Elkins. Mind if I see your credentials? I don't have them with me. I see. Maybe we better go back to your office. Ain't there neither. I was held up on the way down. Took my wallet, papers, everything. Mm Mm-hmm. I know the town council got a telegram saying you were coming. But no matter as important as this, I'm sure you understand. I'd uh, rather wait for confirmation. That'll take a week. Might. Look, Steele, you don't have to know who I am to save your company thousands of dollars. No. If that shipment's coming down next week, I know one thing. Judd Hamey knows about it. Maybe. If you bring it down a week early, you might fool him. I'll see what I can do. Good. If you want me for anything, the sheriff's office is open again. All right, Elkins. Let me know how you make out. Yeah. Tom. Tom. What? Oh, morning, Jean. I've been looking all over for you. Why? There's a crowd of men over at your office. What do they want? They said something about a posse. Can you saddle a horse? Sure. Go over to Wendy's barn and get my horse ready. I have a feeling I'm going to be needing it. All right, Tom. See you later. All right, what's it all about? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, one at a time. When do you suppose when you start? Well, Tom, lots of the fellas seen how you handled young Ralph last night, and I guess that's what they've been waiting for. I see, and what are you going to do? Well, Ralph took off, took off into the hills this morning, and we all figure he's headed straight for Judd, wherever he's holed up. So we figure all we got to do is follow Ralph yeah, into the hills. Right. Right. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey. I think you're making a mistake, man. Well, I don't know. Because if you get up there in them hills, Judd's going to be taking pot shots at you from back of every rock. A lot of you men will get hurt, and you might not even get Amy. I think your mind is made up, Tom. They're going to ride with or without you. Then it'll be without me. Okay, fine, fine. Come on, let's go. Hey, sorry, Tom. I thought you was going to be different. Go on. You better get riding. Soon as I saw the posse right out the north end of town, I headed for Wendy's barn. Jean had my horse waiting, and I lit out fast as that pony had run. Ralph had about a two-hour start of me, but he wouldn't be riding hard, and I figured once I got past the posse, I might catch him before dark. When I got out of town, I headed straight north, keeping a low range of hills between me and the posse. About five or six miles out, I cut through a draw. And sure enough, there they was about a mile behind me and moving slow. With nothing between me and Ralph, I gave that little horse all the leather he'd take. And by late afternoon, I picked up a dust cloud dead ahead. By keeping to the timber and crossing back and forth on his trail, I figured I thought, well, I ought to catch him by sundown. It was slow going, but at least I wasn't raising no dust, and my coming up on him should have been something of a surprise. But when I topped a rise an hour later and looked down in the canyon ahead, his dust cloud had disappeared. 
First I thought he'd pulled up for the night. Then I heard a twig snap to my left, and a voice was speaking at me down the barrel of a coat. Supposing you keep them hands up, Elton. Okay, Ford. Thought you were smarter than this. When would you spot me? About an hour ago. Been watching you crisscrossing ever since. Guess I thought you was dumber than this. Why, you... Take it easy, Ford. Ain't nobody out here to say it weren't self-defense. No, there ain't. What a feel you You pull. won't. I won't, huh? No. Because killing ain't your line. Why'd you follow me out here for... To tell you to get the lead out of your jeans and get riding. <laughs> There's a posse of men about four or five miles back. They're aiming to trail you to your pal Judd and do a little shooting. You're bluffing. Well, you'll see that dust cloud pretty soon if it don't get too dark. We're just wasting time to get down off on that horse. What? You heard me. You know, I could be wrong about you. Get down. Maybe you could kill. Go on. We're reaching the point where I don't take chances. Get down. <laughs> huh? Look for the dust cloud. His bullet crashed into my shoulder, and I felt like I'd hit a stone wall. Then I was on him, dragging him off his horse. He rolled across the ground, and I could feel his spurs raking my legs. I saw the gun shining in his hand, and I knew I had to get it. And I was on my feet, and my boot heel was driving down hard on his hand. The gun dropped in the dirt, and I kicked it away. Then I picked him up and hit him with everything I had. Again, and again, and again, and again. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Get up! Please! No! Get going! What? Get up on that horse and ride. Well, I, I'll I hold the posse off long as I can. But I don't now know. get going. You're crazy, Elkins. And tell Hamy I said the next time he pokes his nose in Abilene, I'll blow him from here to California. Now get going. Ford took off up the canyon, I tied up my shoulder best I could and rode back toward the posse. About a mile from him, I roped a bush and tied it on behind me. Then I lit out to the west. The dust cloud that bush kicked up was thumping the sea. And pretty soon, the posse was following me like a colt tags after his mammy. I led him around through the canyon till it was dark. Then I took to the timber and headed back to town. By the time we got back, that little pony was lathered to an inch of his life. And the pain in my shoulder was fretting like a new brand. We was a sorry-looking rig when we turned into Wendy's barn. I was bedding him down when I heard steps behind me and a light flash in my face. Turn off that light. Any of the others get back yet? No. Nobody's been in the bar all night. They usually come in for a drink. I had it get out of here. What's the matter? Nothing. You're hurt. I gotta get out. Yeah. Lean on me. My... Lean on me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what happened. Just plain run out of sand, I guess. I felt like I was riding a wild horse, only in slow motion, and there was nothing I could do about it. The barn was swinging round like it had come on nails in a high wind. I felt an arm go round me, grabbing my waist. Then I stopped trying. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I was lying on the bed, and Jean was leaning over me. Feel better? Yeah. Was the real cut? What? Be all right now. My, my room? Mm-hmm. How? How'd you do it? You weren't my cut. Sorry. Sorry I fooled it. Probably best I might have hurt you. How? When I took the bullet out. You? Be all right. Yeah. A long time. Hmm? Since I was took care of by a woman. Oh. Had slugs in me before, but I always rode till I was holed up, and I took them out myself. This way, see? Been a move yeah. Better give much thought to set him down. You shouldn't be here. Did you? No. 
Some men are made for that sort it's of life. Right. I'm not. It's all right. You don't man. understand. I was just thinking out loud. I... You better get out of here before they get back in. Yeah. My shirt, it's all burnt. I'll get rid of it. You know. Hey, Tom. Tom, let me in. Wendy. I've seen your light on. Come on, Tom. What are you going to do? Come on, Tom. I'll run up. I don't. What do you want, Wendy? Gee. Shouldn't. Forget it. Will you be able to sleep now? Yeah. You'll be all right in the morning. Do you? If I could settle down, I'd do it now. I know now. Night. Night. <laughs> Next morning, my arm was stiff, but I figured if I was careful, nobody would know the difference. Couldn't take a chance on laying in my bunk all day. Time was closing in. I had to be ready for anything that happened. I'd come down here with three days to do the job, and I'd wasted one of them chasing around the prairie after a nervous squirt. Two days left, and no sign things was going to go my way. I spent the day sitting in the sheriff's office. All my lines was out, and there was nothing to do but wait. Any other time, it would have struck me funny. Sitting there with my feet on the desk, the cell door opened behind me. But right now, minutes were sliding away. The flies was buzzing in the sunlight. I must have dozed off. Of course, I didn't hear them coming until the door bust open. Hey, uh, what's the idea of busting in here like this? We aim to do some talking with you. Hey, no, right, we do it. Okay, Wendy, you seem to be the speaker for this group. Supposing you do the talking. Uh, we want to know what kind of marshal you are anyways. Who wants to know? We do. The whole town... The whole town does. First night you come here, I knowed something was funny. Who ever heard of a marshal letting a kid draw on him and get away with it? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> something like that. That's a marshal's job. If he ain't getting shot out, he ain't doing his job. Maybe so, but what about yesterday? What about it? We come in here busting to make a posse, and what did you do? Yeah, yeah, thank thank you, you. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. Thought. There's easier ways to get Hamian to go hooping and hollering into the hills while he sits up on a rock and shoots you down one by one. What kind of ways? There's ways, that's all. You expect Judge Hamian's going to come to you? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) All right, maybe he won't. But I'll tell you one thing. It's the marshal's place to call for a posse being formed and not the town's. Let me tell you something, mister. This town's been without law for a long time, and we had to do the best we could. So the man comes along that can change things, that's the way it's going to stay. That's right. That's right. the way we had it. Now, ah, you that kind of man? Are you? What's going on in here? Come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go. Come on. What's up, Wendy? It's all right, Steele. We were just asking Mr. Elkins here a couple of questions. Yeah, I know. That's all right. Like what? Like what was he doing yesterday? Why? Because when I got back to the barn last night, your horse was lathered up like it had been rid a hundred miles. And this morning, when I snuck down to the kitchen early, I found the girl down there stuffing her shirt in the stove. It was your shirt, and the left sleeve was all blood. Seems to me that's mighty strange acting for a marshal. Well, what you got to say, Elkins? Sure, I did some riding yesterday. Where? That's none of your business. Well, darn it, I'll make it my business. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Listen, men. I don't know any more about Elkins than you do. Maybe he is a marshal, maybe he isn't, I don't know. But I've done something about finding out. What do you do? Paul, I sent a wire to the state capitol asking for credentials on Tom Elkins. We ought to have an answer by tomorrow. It's late. I suggest you all go home to supper and we'll take this up again tomorrow. Yeah, what about Elkins? Yeah, about can, can anybody on? say he isn't Marshal? Well, I guess he's innocent till proved guilty. Come on, let's break it up, man. Well, that's that. Yeah. Oh, uh, almost forgot to tell you what I came over here for. What? I got word back from the company. They're going to advance that shipping date. To when? Well, they couldn't get it down today or tomorrow, but uh, it ought to come through in four or five days. Maybe that's the way it should be. Huh? I don't get it. You wouldn't. (laughs) Well, don't look so worried. Do you think I was going to steal it from you? I don't know what I thought. 
till now. <laughs> Tom, they're coming, they're coming. Wait a minute, who's coming? I was riding out off the town, I saw. So who? Ralph Ford and Judd Haynes. They're coming this way. We'll get a posse no. out of it. But look, you said I was to... still marshal. We'll do it my way. Help I want I everybody would... off that main street. I'll go meet him alone. Okay, sir. I'll get going. Yep. I don't understand what's going on, Tom. Does this have anything to do with this? No, Jean. I... Be careful. Don't worry. This is what I'm best at. By the time I got out on the street, word had spread like fire and dry timber. There wasn't a soul in sight. But as I walked up the middle of the street, every once in a while I caught a blind being lifted or a curtain being parted. There was a lot of watching being done in Abilene. The road stretched straight ahead to the country outside of town. In the half-light, I could see the hill at the top of the street where the last house left off and the prairie begun. If the light held, Amy and me couldn't help but see each other. But night comes fast in the west. Before I got halfway to the hill, it was dark, and I couldn't see the houses on the side of the street. I stood still and listened. A horse fell in the distance, but outside of that, there wasn't a sound. I started walking again, and this time I loosened my coats and their holsters. A dog was barking at the other end of town, maybe fussing over the unnatural like quiet. I remember thinking the sound of a dog in the night's a comforting one. When you don't hear much when you're a mover. And as far as I heard it, I knew it was coming. I hit the dirt. The shadow moved between the houses on my right. I'll get you, Elkin. I'll get you. The squirt. I should have known. Sneaked it up all side of me like that. I didn't want to mess around with him, but I knew I wasn't going to get to Haney to afford to settle one way or the other. The dirt was cool against my face, but when I started to crawl from the shadows around the houses, my shoulder was hot with pain. He hadn't fired for two or three minutes, and it was hard to tell where he might have moved. Then I heard a rattle. Stone. I knew which one he was hiding by. I was in the shadows now, and I got up on all fours and crawled to the back of the house. I stood up, took out my coat, and slid round the rear to the other side. There he was, lying in the dirt about halfway to the road and looking the other way. I measured the distance careful. And run the ten feet away. You stinking He turned. The shot went wild in the air, and my gun butt hit his head. I took his gun, threw him out in the road, and let him lay in there. Figured five. Maybe six minutes it went by while I was chasing forward. Amy had to be near now. I was out in the middle of the street again, walking north when I seen him. Just a shadow about thirty feet away and standing smack in the middle of the road. I guess he's seen me at the same time, too. Ralph tells me you're gonna chase me out of town, kid. You're making a mistake, Amy. This ain't Tom. Ward. Yeah, it's Ward. I come in here looking for some fun. You're going to get it. What are you talking? Get back. What? Get back. You crazy? This is Judge you're talking to, Ward. I know. What's the matter? Tom is riding in here tomorrow as marshal. I heard. I come down ahead of him just to make sure everything went smooth for him. I see. He's no match for you, Amy. What do he ever do for you? Nothing. You're no more like brothers. Shut up. Okay, Elkins, if that's the way you want it. As soon as he said Elkins, I was falling for the dirt and firing as I fell. I saw him start to fall, then twist up on his feet again. He fired once more. And I answered him twice. And he crashed to the dirt and was still. Down in the other end of town, a dog was barking. Comfort and sound. A dog in the night. Comfort him. Leaving, Tom? Yep. Sorry to see you go. I'd like to stick around for a day or two, Steve. Help you get that shipment in safe, but I gotta be moving. 
The town will never forget what you did last night. Reckon it'll be a few days before I forget it, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well. Tom? Yeah? Can I ride part of the way with you? You'd do a lot better staying here. All right, Tom. Bye. Bye. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a oh, minute. Oh, there. What's the matter, Wendy? Uh, there's a fellow down in town says he's Tom Elkins. Says he can prove it, too. Tom. He's heading up this way. Well, I was just about... You sit tight, young fella. He'll be here in a couple of shakes now. Ah, sure. Yeah. Ah, that's him, mister. That's the one shot Judge Haney last night. Well, what are you saying, mister? Which one of you is Tom Elkins? Reckon as how it's possible there might be two Tom Elkins in this world. Don't you, mister? Yeah. Reckon that's possible. It's kind of confusing having two in one town. Don't you think? Might be. Well, maybe you better get right. Now, huh, Mr. Elkins? Yeah, Mr. Elkins. Maybe I better. of Morgan County, a story of a man who rode through a town and swapped freedom for justice. And if you like Ward's story, why not come back again next week, friends? I'll have a man who found his own eyes to be the key to life or death. I like to call it eyewitness. So until next week, this is John Steele saying a life of adventure is yours for the taking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, Goodbye and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced by Robert Monroe, written and directed by Elliot Drake. Grant Richards with hers as Ward. Also in our cast were Ross Martin, Connie Lemke, and Phil Sterling. John Steele is played by Don Douglas. Musical effects were created by Doc Whipple. And your announcer has been Ted Melly. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Eyewitness, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, Adventurer. This program came from New York. Follow clues down Mutual's Mystery Lane to further thrills and chills. Along the Sunday Avenue of Mystery and Suspense, Martin Kane, the two-fisted gumshoe. The Shadow in a Cloak of Invisibility. True Detective Mysteries with Real Life Cases. Roy Rogers with Action Western Style. And Nick Carter, Master Detective. Weekdays hear I Love a Mystery every night over most of these stations with the fabulous adventurers Jack, Doc, and Reggie in Eerie Investigations. Remember, all roads lead to Mutual when you travel the mystery trail, where you hear the announcer say, This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.